Okay, uh, good morning everyone. My name is Jim Henderson and welcome to Soft Plans Friday Fundamental on Outdoor Living Design. Um, over the course of the next 45 minutes, my goal is to take you through designing some of what you see on screen. We'll do our best to get through as much of it as possible, which will include the ability to see what goes into designing a screened in porch. Um, you'll see a, a deck that we're going to be working with. Uh, we're going to import custom symbols uh, so you can take a look at that and even a custom uh, JPEG which you can you know use for in my case I use it on the the, uh, the patio that was there we'll add things like 3d fences um, using the site plan mode and maybe even a little bit of landscaping uh, the goal of this is in 45 minutes to cover as much as possible I am recording the class so you'll be able to go back and review some of this as well uh, when we post it to our YouTube page next week. Um, so I will not be uh, entering into dialogue during this, this this process just so that we can cover everything off if at all possible. Now one of the things that you're going to see as I'm you know working through the uh, the plan today maybe just how quickly things actually um, you know uh, evolve on screen for you and in, in ca this case here um, what, what I'll be doing is just taking you in to show you a little bit about what the, the hardware requirements are. So if you go to softplan.com, you can actually go into the uh, the support options and you can click on the computer requirements and we'll list for you the complete list of, you know, uh, what hardware we recommend for running Softplan version 2022. And one of the links on there is what type of video card do you need? And this is probably the, the, the most important part of this entire, um, in, you know, stage as you're going through and reading what you need to run Softland 2022 because the video card, while the minimum is to run DirectX 11, we prefer if you can run the new DX12, which gives you um, much better uh, lighting, much better um, uh, reactionary time as you're making changes within the plan, etc. And so in this case here, um, inside soft plan version 2022, if you were to come in through options and you were to click on, let's say the mode options here, you'll see I have my DX12 set up to, uh, to, you know, to be running at this stage so that as I'm, you know, working within the plan, my lighting, my shadows, my, my regeneration time within soft plan is basically at a, as high a quality as, as you can get. And it's going to be relatively instantaneous and, and much more realistic, um, to compare it. If you were in DX 11, okay. Um, it would actually, you know, uh, take, a, take a little bit away from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this plan. And, and this is really where we're going to be starting over here, which is just, I opened up one of our, sample drawings okay so we have a main floor plan foundation plan second floor plan okay um, which I've basically stripped down and gotten rid of everything that I had customized and this is basically in a lot of cases for those of you who are doing outdoor you know design work is what you get to start with right you have a house on there you usually got the, the, the typical 10 by 12 concrete pad in some capacity um, you know that has been poured and they're looking to turn that into you know more of a space as an extension of their house and so I want to take you through what that process looks like. And so one of the things that you will see is I'm going to be, you know, working both in 3D as well as the, the 2D and going back and forth. So let's jump into the main floor plan so we can see what this looks like. And as you can see, it's a simple, you know, two-story plan, okay, uh, colonial in, in nature. So there's the main floor. There's the second floor that I'm, I'm going to pull up. And as we take a look at it, you know, um, I, once again, over here inside 3D, there's not a whole lot to it. The, uh, the, the trees and such, I have generated the site plan automatically and so I, I you know I put the trees in here to represent what is there so that we're building within that so inside the main floor plan I'm going to zoom this up and I'm going to select the draw wall function and under the draw wall function you've got a three and a half inch screen porch and from here I'm just going to sketch this in and then we'll talk a little bit about it so perhaps using the kitchen wall as a guide I'm just going to pull it out you know plus or minus you know 14 15 feet something along 
along that lines, right? And then when I get there, um, I'll just, you know, run the cursor, you know, left to right, you know, whatever that, and use this basic wall of the powder room as, a, as a, a guide and then sketch it in. And as we take a look at this inside 3D, you can see what this is looking like. And so there's a screen there. Um, again, everything, it, you know, I see things much clearer on my screen than what you may get because of the internet and because of the, the, the video sharing process. But you should also see a series of beams. And maybe this looks a little more um, detailed in your screen porch. And let me show you why. So I've gone in and, and the original by default simply has a plate on the bottom and a plate on the top. And I've gone ahead and added a few extra, you know, uh, intermediate beams that are running around for support, also for visual. And then I beefed up the header on this, you know, for supporting a roof, etc. So as we look at this inside the main floor plan, I'm going to edit that screen wall and just show you how you can define your own. As I edit this wall and I come in here and click the definition option, it'll take me into the wall definition dialog. And what you'll see right here is we've got, you know, basically our, our wall. I've got a series of wood beams, if you will, which have different dimensions. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four of them, which is, you know, denoted right here. At the top, I have a three and a half, you know, uh, or, or four by eight, you know, if you will, you know, that's my header. And then I've got a, a series of, you know, two by fours that run horizontally only throughout the wall. There is a screen material in there. And then there's um, the none material, which just basically gives the wall some definition or thickness so that this dotted line, which indicates what I see in plan or the, the, the plan view of this, okay, um, is where uh, it, it's going to show the none material just to give it some definition on there. Now, you... Within the wall definition, you can move these features, okay? So I can set them to wherever I want them to be, all right? Um, you have a an edit feature, a move feature, an adjust feature, and you can also erase items out of there and even undo and, and redo your changes. So as you're defining your wall, if I come in and let's just say for, for argument's sake, I come in here and I, I erase that one material. It took it out of the list and it now took it out of here. So if I were to come back to my you know, um, 3D, and just take a look at it quickly, it removed that entire material there. Now, if I wanted to edit that wall once again, and let's add that material back in, which is what I did initially when I was designing this, Okay, so I'll go into the definition. I'll select the add material and I'm just going to scroll down. Now these are listed alphabetically. So I just need to find, you know, where the the, uh, the solid wood beam is going to be. And I'll click on that to add that material. And you can see that it adds it here. And by default, I know that this wall is three and a half inches in width. I'm gonna make this an inch and a half in height. So it's, you know, similar to the other materials and I'll fix it so that the height does not change even if the wall height changes, okay? I can mark it, modify that as bearing, although the most important thing is, is that the top, top one is. And then in this case, I'm just going to move this to where I, you know, I want it to be. And you can see that it calls out the dimension there so that if I wanted the top of that beam to let's, or, or, you know, underside of that beam to be six foot 10, I could certainly specify that, you know, um, as such so that uh, it's, you know, in a specific area. OK, and it obviously would align with with the headers. And once again, as I said, I can always move this material to wherever I want it to be. And this will add, you know, or update on the fly. So once that has been added into the 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 wall definition menu, it adds it back into here. We have, you know, kind of our, our wall. So. I'm going to break this out into a new vertical tab group so that you will see my 3D model over here is in the DX12 render, okay, to, as I also work within the plan view so you can get kind of a feel for it. So, you know, off the top, I'm probably going to come in and do some dimensioning on this, right? I mean, um, so it, here I'll just see, you know, you can click on dimension, pull your extension lines off. I use a, a lot of shortcuts when I'm drawing within the plan. So you will see me sometimes, you know, not reach for a menu item so much as I'm just, you know, doing editing and, and so on. And so in this case here, I may just, you know, modify this to, you know, be exactly what the dimension needs to be. So an fairly large, you know, oversized uh, screen imports that we're going with. And let's just say I'll pop that out to 16 feet. So, you know, 
there it is as far as that goes. Now, once that is set and you can edit and change, you know, the, the, the plate heights, et cetera. But if I edit this wall within plan view, because I started it on this wall right here, you'll see that it automatically gets an offset that's equivalent to the floor system of the wall that it joined with. I can override the defaults and key in the dimension. In this case here, I'm going to pop it all the way up to, let's say, nine feet, just so we've got a, you know, fairly tall, you know, um, area. And it also keeps, you know, these plates and so on away from the windows. Okay. With that in place now, I'm going to come in and, and possibly begin to add things like a roof to this, right? And things like this concrete porch, I'm probably not going to have to even break that up. I'll actually be able to go in and um, and just build the, the, the deck right over top of it. We'll put posts in and so on, similar to what I, I you know, designed a moment ago. Now, to add things like the um, where there's going to be the roof and the decking and so on, we'll simply be changing modes within the um, the drawing. So in this case here, where it says drawing, I'm going to click the down arrow key on this, and I'm simply going to you know change that I want to you know change whatever mode that it is I want to add. So inside the drawing mode, I will select draw and I'll select the the uh, the deck option. And I'll pick deck to begin with, okay? And I'm just going to come in here and I could actually turn the snap feature on if I'm looking to snap to certain points on the deck itself, okay, or on the walls themselves, or I can sketch it in and I can always adjust the reference circles to find it. But what it does is it places this, you know, the 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 decking in at this at this stage, and we can see, you know, exactly what we've got there. Um, I can zoom this up so that if I'm looking to see, you know, dimensionally where this is, uh, you know, uh, sitting, okay. And so this wall right here, um, I can see that I could technically need to move it down to sit on top of the deck because it's finding the floor system. So if I were to edit this, if you if you were to edit the 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 deck plus the actual surface side itself, okay, um, it only needs to be the wall offset up 10 and a half inches rather than the 11.65 inches. And so this is where, you know, doing things within 3D sometimes allows you to visually see what's happening within the plan. So here I could just edit the exact same thing on the other walls. And I'm doing it in 3D, but I can do it in both the um, the, the plan view or, you know, the, the elevation view. And then I will, you know, in this case here, come over here and repeat edit this change to this wall. So that's now sitting on top of the, the actual deck itself. Okay. Now we'll put the posts in and so on, but we're going to need something underneath the deck, whether it's, um, you know, uh, block walls or we're running posts all the way through and we're going to put a skirting or, or, or so on on there. And so one of the things that I did on, on the one that I showed you was I was just going to run kind of a block foundation with brick on it and, and just, you know, we could match the brick that's on the house. And if that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the foundation plan and I'll, erase this out because I already had it in there. And so inside this foundation plan that we're going to work with, okay, um, I'm just going to, uh, and if you can just keep your microphones off, that would be ideal so that we don't get any feedback on there. But inside this plan, I'm just coming in through what's called file and overlay. So when I'm in the foundation plan and I select file followed by overlay, I can actually overlay on top of whatever drawing it is that I want. So in this case, let's just say the, the main floor plan, quote unquote, bare, which had nothing on it. So we can see the walls above. And now I could just simply come in and I'll just use the draw select to pick, you know, kind of the same house walls that I've got, you know, for the foundation plan. And here I'm just going to sketch them in. Now, in this case here, it's basically like laying one sheet of vellum over top of the other. So it, it is conceivable that I need to do, uh, you know, some amount of moving, but what it does allow me to do is very quickly come in as part of, of, of the design phase and align things and set things up without, you know, a, a tremendous amount of work. So you can see how quickly I've managed to get this into place. And now as I go between the two plans, this will update on the fly. <clears throat> Okay, so we want to come in here next and we want to add some posts in here all the way around. And so inside the, the, the deck option, I would select post and I'm just going to click on that option for post and we'll go to structural. Now inside the structural, let's just say we're going to use a six by six pressure treated post. So I'm gonna zoom this up right in here and I'm just going to click to add that in and you can see the post is added. And of course I can move this, you know, to be exactly where I want it to be relative to the, um, to the, to the, the deck, okay? 
Um, and so I can also move it elevationally speaking so that if I, you know, wanted to um, move this below, you know, the ground, okay, or I can edit this and I can also move it, you know, elevationally speaking by just coming in and modifying this. And let's just push this thing deeper into the ground based on what we have, you know, for, for the um, elevation. And you can see how it automatically updates, you know, over here. So as I drop this a further, you know, couple of feet down into the ground, I could also come in here and I could specify what the height of that is going to be. And it drops one in there for me. And so now we have one post in there. And what I will do at this stage is um, I'm just going to come in through move and copy block. And I will copy this, you know, basically, you know, 18, you know, feet across, give or take, right? And I could, you know, zoom in as I'm doing it. And so once I get it to where I want it to be, um, here, I'll just simply say I want to have, you know, a couple of these copies, equally space them and click OK. And what it does is it drops one here and equally spaces those. And of course, those could be dimensioned in, in a similar way. So likewise, I could do the same thing, OK, and, and just drop it in. And I'm going to add, uh, you know, three copies in there, equally space them, and it will drop some down this side. And then, of course, you know, the last thing to do is, is over here. Now, it's always preferential to dimension these, okay? But when you're in a design phase, a lot of times you're, you're playing with concepts, which is what I'm doing, right? And so I can just simply modify and change things, you know, as far as the concept's concerned, right? And, you know, um, and that's all I'm doing right now is I'm just, you know, playing around with getting, you know, wall heights, you know, correct, playing with, with beams. And so this is like, for me, it's like the, the old days of sketching out on a piece of graph paper or, or vellum, right? You're just going in and, you, and you're, you're modifying, you know, um, you know, what you want as far as volume and, and shapes and so on. And then you can always, you know, key in the dimensions exactly where you want them to be after the fact. Okay, so this gets us, um, for all intents and purposes right now, just briefly what we want as far as, you know, the overall shape. Let's add a roof to this, and then we can begin adding some other items to it, okay? Now, the roof is actually stored on the second floor plan, so I'm going to pop into my second floor plan, and as I change into roof mode, you can see, you know, the roof that is existing up here, and basically, I add the roof from the second floor plan looking down to the first for a couple of reasons. One, if this roof were to intersect with the second story, I could then see how that's going to valley or tie in. Secondly, if all the roofs are stored in one plan, I can then generate a single bird's eye perspective for my construction drawings. When I click, I'm in roof mode, I can go into the roof options and here inside roof options, I can change my, what my, my dimensions are going to be as far as my roof is concerned. I can change things like overhangs, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to make this a 512 pitch to start. And then I would simply come in and trace. It's important that wall definition menu that I took you into, I pointed it out very briefly, but it had bearing properties. And the only way that you're going to see this inside 3D is if you've actually got the bearing properties, you know, there. And so uh, let me uh, remove this from the model. And I just want to get the correct second floor plan into the model so that we can actually see this and it adds the roof. Now you can see the benefit to having the 3D. I can see whether or not a window is going to be impacted by the change that I have made. And in this case here, it has not. Okay, so I'm, you know, I'm actually doing okay as far as that goes. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, edit this and change this to a gable on that end. And so as I do that, okay, it applies the gable. There's no material on that right now. So I can make a decision whether or not I'm going to screen that in. Am I going to, you know, uh, put trusses in, et cetera. And that's just a matter of, you know, editing this roof edge right here. And when I edit that roof edge, I'll have the ability to go in and specify what the material is that's going to be used on there. And of course, I could then just scroll down until I find screen and apply it to the gable end so that my bill of materials, elevations, and so on all display that. While I'm here, I'm going to add in, let's say, a single truss running across here. So under the framing option, I'm going to, you know, click on, let's just say, a truss option and just simply specify or add one across. As I do that, I can then edit this truss. 
Okay. And on that trust, when I do an edit on it, I'll then be able to go in and specify, you know, what the, um, you know, uh, if you will, material is going to look like for the webbing. I'll be able to go in and specify the bottom cord and beef it up if I want it something thicker or, or more defined. And of course that will come from your engineer and so on. Right. And, um, you know, and in which case then I could then, you know, using the offset tool, I could go in and specify this to be specific distances. If I, you know, depending on on what we're doing and what the the engineer calls out for okay and it's going to add that in there on you know my my uh you know, my options here. And so I will just zoom this in. And when on the option I had, I had a single truss and then I was doing beams. Okay. So if I want these to be as far as the material is concerned, the same color as the posts, I'll just do a surface copy paste and have that, you know, done something like so, so that we've got, you know, this here. Okay. So that places that in there. And you will see that at this stage on the underside, I've got kind of a, a you know tongue and groove that's showing in there. And that's where if I were um, just going to do, you know, beams and, and such, uh, in this case, it could be one option to have those trusses in there. I could also come in through just simply doing the, the draw beam option and I could add beams in and then have them fit to the to the uh, to the roof as well. So in this case here, as I'm you know doing the draw beam, I'll pick, let's say, a four by eight wood beam. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of this by eye. So I'll start with this one, you know, up against the roof or, you know, the wall right here and I'll do another one over over here. And then what I can do is I can actually edit this wood beam. Okay. So by default, when I edit the beam, you're going to see that it has, you know, no offsets, etc. But you will then be able to go in and fit the beam to the roof. Okay. And, uh, you know, and in which case then it would go in and be able to specify, you know, what the dimensions are. So let's just move this out so that it doesn't pick up the, the second floor roof. I'll, I'll uh, place one right here. I'll edit this wood beam. And in this case here, I'm just going to fit it to the roof. And when I do that, it's going to give you the dimensions of where that beam is going to be. And then you can, you know, specify, you know, from there. So those are two different options that you can do as far as the framing is concerned. Okay. So in my case, I'll leave the trusses in there so that we've got that. And I'm just going to pull this out so we can see this, you know, uh, to date. Okay. Continuing to work with the, the the porch, and you can do drawing within the 2D, the 3D, et cetera. So over here within 3D, I'll select the draw options, and I can then come in through the exterior doors. And in this case here, I'll just pick a screen door. And I can pick from any one of the options that's there. So fully screened, if I wanted to have a, a metal panel, et cetera. And, I, and I'll just click to add that in, and then I'll just zoom this up. OK. And so once we see this, you know, in place, I can then do a, you know, move if I want to move this right up to, you know, that, um, that one right there. And then I'm just going to do a copy, if you will. Right. And I'll actually change out of uh, um, into my floor plan and I can zoom this up and I could just do a copy of this post and move it if we wanted to have a secondary post, you know, just to frame that in something like so. Okay. So that again, something else that we can do and I could, you know, also manually add a header in there and frame that out. But you know, that just, again, is just to right now give us that, you know, what that's going to look like. And so oops, looks like I moved it. I actually was looking to copy that. So I moved one and let me just copy this back here so we don't lose that one up against the house, something like so. Okay, so that's, you know, in a, a, a in a nutshell, just getting a few custom walls in there, getting a, a porch in there. We're going to add a deck off of the left-hand side, and I am freelancing this a little bit, so, um, you know, much like you, you might do, you know, on, on the fly with yours. So I'm going to come in here through draw. I'm actually in the floor plan drawing mode right now, and I'm just going to pick, you know, my, my deck options. And so from here, I'll just click to start this. I'm going to run it out to the edge of the garage, and then we'll we'll actually run this beyond or, or you know past the where the screen porch is and so i'm just using the tape measure as a guide to say let's just run out give or take 24 feet um, we're fortunate to have a very large yard to be able to do this and so then i'll run it left to right you know you know give or take 14 feet and then we'll bring it back and we'll maybe use this post as a guide so to speak and then return it so I, i've created a large l-shaped deck so to speak right and you can see it over here inside the plan view now i can edit this deck and I can actually modify and change 
use that. So by default, it took the same offset, okay, as what the other one is. In this case here, let's just offset this down 15 inches. So, you know, you can see over here in plan view now, it offset down, uh, you know, by uh, two steps, you know, relative to, you know, what's what's happening, you know, over there. And so that's, the, there's our deck, you know, and let's talk a little bit about the properties. <clears throat> When you draw the deck in, it's got the joists, okay, which are running in one direction. So as I edit this deck edge, I can see that, you know, the, the joist um, reference edge is, is going to, to run from, from that, or, or the, the deck surface is going to run from that edge, and the joist reference edge is going to run from the other side. Now, reasonably speaking, these decks, you know, joists wouldn't run all the way across like they're doing there. So you could trace this in as two different decks, okay, all together, um, you know, and you could also, you know, just come in and, and you know, break the decks, et cetera. So what I'll do here is I'm going to come in through draw and let's draw it the way that we would probably, you know, want to, to, to build this. So I'll draw this one across something like so. And as I do that, okay, it's going to place this piece of deck on for me right here. Once again, I could dimension this if I, you know, wanted a specific dimension. And let's just say we're going to make that, you know, 12 feet, you know, up from there. And then we're going to, and, and, you know, I'll edit that and I'll, you know, offset it down at least a step, maybe two. So come in through here and we'll type in 7.5 inches and we're going to offset it down. So it goes down one step from the screen porch. Now with this deck right here, I can, you know, edit this and, and, and change the, the joys, change the, the, um, uh, the, the decking surface. Okay. And I can also come in through draw deck and I can add things like parting boards. So here I could pick on the, the deck edge that I want to add parting board in to each of the edges. And you can see at this stage that as I do that, it's adding a, you know, parting board all the way around, you know, the side. And I could even draw one down the middle if I wanted to do that. So I'm going to just draw a parting board. I'll turn my F11 snap feature on to hit the midpoint of the deck. And so you can see at this stage, I actually get a, you know, parting board running down the middle. And as I do that, okay, I'm now going to be able to edit, let's say this deck and edit the, the, um, the, the edge of that deck. And here I could actually change the, um, you know, if I make this the, uh, uh, you know, um, reference side for, you know, the, the surfaces, and I'm going to change this to 45. I'm actually now modifying, you know, the angle with which that is going to run in there. If I, you know, explode this or break it into two decks, I could have it running more of a herringbone, you know, type pattern there. Now, once again, I can come back to deck and I'm just going to sketch in kind of the little part that, that pops out here. OK, whatever, you know, and again, I could dimension that. But in this case here, um, you know, as, as I look at this, OK, I'm going to edit this deck. I'm going to offset it down the same seven and a half inches so that it's, you know, level. Or if I wanted to drop it an extra step, I could make it 15 inches and down. So now we've got a secondary, you know, tier or step right there. Right. And I could even come in through tools and let's say use the chamfer option. And I'm just going to chamfer this, you know, to give it a, a little more, um, you know, visible you know, kind of appeal, as you can see. And of course, the decking surface is running from where the triangle is. The joist is running from here. So if I wanted to edit this edge right here and set it as the surface edge, that decking will now run, you know, horizontally for me, okay, on the, the um, on both the plan as well as, you know, in the elevation. Okay, and I could do the same thing with the, the deck option where I could come in, parting board, deck edge, okay, and in this case here, and then just, you know, click on the, the you know, the various, oops, edges of where to add that, okay, so... Um, lots of details that you can add. And obviously, I mean, there's only so much that we can, you know, cover off in a short period of time, but that gets us to this stage right here. Now, one of the things that I am going to do is we're going to, you know, add things like, um, you know, uh, we could, you know, in the same way that I added posts over here, I could do that, or I could add at least skirting along the edge of the deck over here. So I'm going to add, you know, skirting and I'm going to add it below. Okay. And I can then specify this to have a specific dimension, whatever that may need to be. Okay. And so I'm just going to, you know, drop it all the way down and I will just edit, you know, or repeat edit wherever I want that, you know, edge to be. Okay. So at least on that side and this side right here, and I can change things like, you know, textures, et cetera, 
on that in just a minute. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to add kind of a wraparound stair to this. And so under the draw deck option, you can come in and you can add your stairs. And keep in mind, everything we're drawing is going to be counted out in the bill of materials. So whether I'm doing a wraparound stair, if you want to put a deck ramp in there, etc. But I will click on this and I will just simply, you know, click to begin, you know, where I want my, my deck stair to be, you know, sketched. And so here I am just basically running it around only that portion there. And it's going to, you know, place for me, okay, the, um, an actual deck stair or deck, you know, running around this section of, of stair here. And so we can see, you know, running down, uh, you know, something like that. Now I'm probably going to add a railing here. I'm going to put a, you know, privacy wall. So, you know, for, for, you know, uh, protection and so on. So nobody gets hurt. So I'll zoom this up and under deck options, once again, I can now come in and I can sketch a railing. So I'm just going to start and railings have had a lot of, of uh, uh, work done to them, which will, you know, greatly enhance, you know, your ability to, to, to convey what it is you want to do. So in this case here, I'm just going to start with this one, which is just kind of a, a um, horizontal cable and I'm going to run it left to right. And when it does that, it places it here. So let's zoom this up so you can see what we have. Okay. So as I zoom this up and I, I, I take a look at it, I'm going to now edit this. Okay. Inside the plan view, which will also update the rail. And so as I do an edit on the specific rail itself, okay, you'll see the, the current assembly and I can go into the custom assembly of this. And here, this is very much like building a wall now. So you have the spindle patterns, you have the tow rail option, which is there and you can specify the dimensions, handrail, grab rail, etc. You can even add materials. So if I want to come in and I want to add a handrail to this, okay. And I want to specify or, or change the dimensions on this just to something that, you know, beefs it up or, or, you know, gives it a little more, you know, definition. You can see it being built over here. And in a similar way, I can actually move, you know, where I want that to be placed. Okay. Relative to the, to the, um, you know, stair uh, or to the, to the rail itself. And of course you can even specify here, you know, dimensionally exactly where you want it to be. So horizontal start versus vertical start, et cetera, okay, is going to move that. And so whether you choose to move it here or whether you choose to um, actually, you know, modify the dimension, as you do that, it's going to, you know, specify that here inside the, uh, the um, actual rail itself. And so as I zoom this up, I'm just going to, you know, I can see what I've got for a rail. Now, the posts themselves, I can also, you know, specify or edit these. And so, again, I'm just going to come in here and it says it's defined by post. So I'm going to override that. I'm going to pop the end post up and, and I, you know, I can go in here. It says center on rail and I can flush the rail. I can half post. I can do a lot of things. Okay, that works. And I'm going to come in here and say it has a post cap. And I'm actually going to pick um, to add a light post cap to this so that, you know, when I do this, it's actually going Going to you know specify or light that you know for me okay and as i you know come down to this end i could do the same thing i just right click the post edits differently than the the actual rail itself so you can see railing post i do an edit here and I'll be able to come in here and specify that I want it to center on rail. I'll do the same dimensions on that. And I'm just going to, you know, add it to have a post cap with the light on there. And so it does something like this. And so again, the, just some new properties that have been added to Softline version 2022 allow me to, you know, very quickly go in and specify rails. And, and we've got videos online for this to take you greater in depth. So when you're dealing with interiors, you'll be able to go in and modify you know, different spindle patterns and so on on this, if you wanted to see that as well. Okay. So that, that gets us to this point here. And then the only other thing that I, I would show that I was going to do on this is if I were to come in through draw wall, and um, I created a privacy wall. So I'm going to draw it first and then I'll show you, you know, um, it, you know, it, it inside the definition. But you can see that as I draw this, it's basically just a series of boards, right, that, you know, have been set up. We'll put a, a, a you know, post, you know, in here. But if you were to edit this, it's really just using the wall definition menu and adding in, you know, boards. And, and a lot of this was just, you know, done by eye a little bit. But I've just added a series of pressure treated boards that run horizontally. I specify them an inch and a half 
by five and a half. And then I kind of just moved them into place. So some of the dimensions are a little bit random, but that's, you know, not unlike what you might do in the field where you're just kind of, you, yes, you measure it, but there's also a, a element of I where I could have actually done inch and a half by three and a half, you know, every third or fourth board, just going for something that's artistic. And so there it is just done through the wall definition menu. I would probably just come in here through move and copy and I'm going to copy one of these over here, okay? And just drop that in something like so, so that when I click okay on this, I get one, and which I can see, I can then adjust this inside 3D as you can see. And so we now have one there and it's you know running down and, and so on. And then I would just come in through the copy block and I will, you know, copy this across to something like that. And in a similar way, I'll just add, you know, two um, for equally spacing the distance so that we split it and we've got, you know, this privacy wall there, right? So that gets that, you know, done. Let's talk a little bit about hardscaping. And I know I'm going really, really fast trying to get a lot of this in. Um, and again, this is being recorded. So you'll have the ability to go back and, and see, you know, uh, you know, all of this. How are we doing so far? Um, I just got a, a message about no video. So I just wanted to ask, can everybody see the video of what, what I'm doing? Okay, perfect. I got a yes, so I'm going to continue. Um, it may have just been a, 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 a you know blip real quick for, for some of you on the on the the internet there. Um, so let's just uh, let's keep this going. Inside the the actual site plan itself, I'm going to come in and just freelance sketch a hardscape back. Okay, so this is I'm actually in the site plan right here, and I'm going to pick on draw, and I'm going to select under site work that I just want to sketch a patio in. OK, and I'm going to click line, you know, on, on this and I am going to, you know, as I say, freelance it just a little bit here. So let's just say I'll, I'll start out here somewhere. I'm going to sketch it, you know, across and then we'll bring it back and just do something like this. OK, and so when I do that, of course, patio was assigned something that is, you know, uh, red in nature sort of thing. I mean, um, you, you know, just when I was setting up the, the existing one that was there, you know, it could have been black. It could have been concrete, etc. cetera. Um, but what I want to do is I want to, you know, possibly go and, and, and find a pattern myself. And this is not unlike something that I would do where I would go in and I would do a search. And in this case here, I found something that I'm looking for that matches with what I'm looking to do. And so in this case here, uh, just using, you know, the snipping tool, I would come in and sketch a box around, you know, the, the, the pattern that I found online. OK, now this could have been provided by the manufacturer, you understand. And so what I'll, all I've done is I've, I've, you know, gone in and I've done a snip of this. And then I would just simply do a file save as of this tool. And in this case here, just to save time, I saved it into my 3D textures and I just by default dropped it in the wall for today. You would actually create a folder and you would put it in site plan or patios and, and so on. Okay. But once that is, has been, you know, captured, saved, you can then assign that texture, okay, to your, um, to, to your, your image. And so in this case here, uh, remember, I just saved it into brick and I saved it into wall and there's the pattern. OK, now I will tell you that lighting is important. So try and get, you know, um, I'm going to fix why it's floating in just a second. And that just has to do with me setting my site for, you know, a moment ago. But in essence, you can see how quickly I can get a pattern in there. OK, and in time, I'll smooth this out and we'll, you know, we'll get the, you know, a, a little less uh, of the, uh, the, the, the um, we'll get some roughness going and so on. But in this case here, I'm going to edit this patio whether I do it in 3D or do it in 2D, and I'll just tell it to fit to the site. And it actually drops it all the way down, okay? I can give it an offset if I wanna push it up just a little bit or you know, relative to, to where it is. But in essence, the fit site actually will get it fit so that it's you know sitting right flush on the ground there. And then you can change the depth or change the offsets and so on, okay? So there it is, you know, letting Softland do its work. Let's go ahead and create very quickly a kitchen, you know, in here and um, so that you know you can see how that's going to be done. I'm going to do it inside the the, the site plan. I'm going to come in through uh, drawing mode, okay. As far as you know that's concerned, and I'm going to you know use one of our soft plan you know plus manufacturers, okay, on here. And so in this case here. Um, 
I'll, I'll do a, a quick search, you know, and we're just going to use kind of Kalamazoo's and it's not that I'm necessarily, you know, married to, to that one there. It's just, it's, it's a great looking set of libraries. And so um, I, I'm going to just come in and you can see all of the manufacturer or, or all the symbols associated with this manufacturer are going to pop up. So I'll pick this grill and I'm just going to, you know, drop that in there. And, uh, you know, I, I may drop in this, you know, outdoor refrigerator system, you know, here and maybe, you know, this over here here and I'll, I'll add a second one there and so again I'm just something quick and and get it into place using the move and align to edge I'll get these aligned you know one to another and then I'm just going to you know pull them up um, you know so that they're they're all snapped together and then what we'll do is we're, we're going to you know build a, a block wall around this and we'll also you know create a countertop on that Okay, so this is what we have thus far, right? Something along that lines. And so I will come in here and remember, I've got kind of a brick inside my foundation that I'm using. So I will just come in through draw wall and um, I'm just going to pick that same, um, you know, concrete, uh, you know, wall that I'm, I'm using already, which, you know, has kind of the brick pattern on there. I don't, you know, I may not even, you know, need the, the actual footing. So let me pick this one and I'm just going to zoom this up and we'll sketch it around here. And so I'll just, you know, click to start and get the exterior. I'll draw this over to here and then I'll draw it down. Um, heights and such I can, you know, get in just a moment, but I'm going to move it into place first of all, so that it's all, you know, everything is flush, so to speak. And I will adjust, you know, this to, you know, so everything, you know, somewhat aligns and I'm going to pull this refrigerator out just a little bit. Using the edit, I can come in through, you know, wall height and I'm going to sketch this in. And let's just say we make this 36 inches in height and we want that down, what, 15 inches perhaps as far as that goes. And so we'll see, you know, where it is located relative to the, you know, the patio that I'm working with, right? Now under draw and under, you know, cabinets, I could come in and sketch a countertop. And so here I will just simply begin to sketch, you know, what that looks like. Now, again, this could be dimensioned, um, you know, as far as everything is concerned, but for what I'm doing today, uh, you know, free forming or, or design concepts. Um, I've got a pretty good eye using the tape measure of where this is going to be. And I can then edit the same countertop and I could go in and specify or modify, you know, where that offset's going to be. So I, again, just taking, um, you know, the, uh, the, the dimensions and, and working them right. And I'll take it out of cleanup because I want it to, to hold where it is. That gets us, you know, really quickly a, um, you know, an outdoor, uh, you know, kitchen. We can put stools across there, etc. Guys, I'm going to run over a couple of minutes today. I know it says it's 45 minutes, but I really want to take you through just a couple of more things with this and also importing a, a custom symbol. So if you can hang with me for just a few minutes, we will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump back in. We'll, we'll keep, um, get, get this finished with you. Okay. So one more time, I'm going to, um, you know, I could draw a post in here. Okay. So I'm just going to come in through draw post and I'm going to, you know, once again, I'll just pick a, a structural, you know, post that's going to be in there. Okay. And I, I, you know, I'll click this and, and drop it in. So that's one. All right. And, I, you know, once that's in, I can always move it to, to you know, where I want it to be. And I'll do a copy and, um, you know, copy it down to this edge down here. And if you remember, I'm actually just creating kind of a pergola of sorts. OK, that's going to, you know, for all intents and purposes, um, you know, sit you know, over this area. And so, you know, once I've got a series of, of these in there, something like so, okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I'm now going to run a, you know, um, beam across there. So I will come in and I'm just going to select draw beam and I could, you know, add it from there or I can use the, the deck beams, okay, as far as the process is concerned. So either way, I'll select the beam option and by doing it using the deck beams, I'm going to be drawing with pressure treated, which will, you know, certainly make it, um, you know, a little bit easier, you know, for my bill of materials to be more accurate, et cetera. So let me click on the draw deck and I'm just going to click on beam right here. So I'm drawing inside the 2D plan and I'll pick a two by 10 pressure treated. OK, so and then I'm just going to sketch this, you know, running across here, something like so. And you see the deck beam here and, uh, you know, whether I, or not I'm going to, you know, um, 
uh, you know, edit this or just move it, you know, inside the 3D. I, you know, am a big proponent often of just doing this. And so once I get it there, I'm just going to edit this and I'm going to change the, the profiles on both the um, left and the right ends. And so profiles are completely user customizable, okay? But in this case here, this allows me to, you know, now have, you know, that running, um, you know, left and right. And I'm just going to pick the move and uh, copy option. And I'll copy another one, you know, across the way and click OK. And so now we've got two of them. And now I'll actually add, you know, the, the cross members going the other way. So under draw and under deck, I'm just going to select that I want to, you know, draw in some deck choice. So I'll pick a single deck choice just to begin with. And again, I could draw this in as a set, but I'm just going to, you know, um, draw in that, that deck choice. And Part of me, I'm jumping back and forth between 2D and 3D, so sometimes I forget which window I initiated a command on, and so I'll just draw that, you know, across the way, and I'll edit this, and I can turn off, you know, things like, you know, when I edit that um, that joist that I don't want deck hangers on it, you know, on on either end, right? So I'll take those off. I could offset this manually if I know what the dimension is and push it up. Okay. Um, in my case, I think I pushed it up a little too high. So if I go in here to 3D and I take a look, yep, there it is. So hence the reason I'll just do inside my 3D, I'll pick move and just drop this down, notch it, edit this. And once again, I could then go in and specify this to have, you know, a profile on, you know, front and back, right? And however, you know, dimension that's going to be, I could, you know, once I'm back in the 2D, I can go to tools, I will select the offset command and just simply click on this. And we'll just say, let's say every 12 inches and we'll go six. I can see the ghosting of, you know, where that is. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And so now very quickly, we got that in there. All we're left to do is come in through 3D. We could do an edit, surface copy, paste, and apply the same white texture to, the, you know, the, the posts, right? So that gets that um, into play. And the last thing that I, I really want to take you through, because I think a lot of you could draw furniture and so on, but how do you get the custom symbols in as far as soft plans concerned? Okay, so I'm going to create a, um, I showed you how to get a, a uh, custom JPEG in there. We'll add a fence. Um, again, I was playing around with the site. So let me just edit this because uh, you can see that that's floating. And that's just the same as what I did over here where I would just fit that to ground. And when I do that, it's going to to, you know, automatically, you know, change the offset of, you know, of what that's going to be. Okay. And you can just, you know, um, I'm actually just moving it around there. All right. So we're going to play, we're going to create a, a fire pit out here, you know, on there. And so one of the things that I did is I, I'm going to bring this back and there's the JPEG we were talking about is if you're not familiar with 3D warehouse, okay. There's the, you can go in there. You will have to create a free account. Just use your Google account, right? That's all I'm using is James H right here. And then you can do a search for any number of symbols that's in there. Now I did a search for Wexford because they, they, they produce a number of three dimensional symbols that, you know, have, um, you know, fire pits and so on. And in this case, we've got the Wexford fire pit, which is the one that I downloaded. So that symbol, I've simply come in I've, you know, clicked on it. I picked the model that I wanted and then I copied it to my desktop so that I could find it. It takes the symbol, all of its dimensions, as well as the textures so that we can, you know, apply this and, and draw it into 3D. So with that already down, I'm going to come over here to my 2D. Okay. And I'm just going to come in through file, system options, system library. And when I come in here, I'll just go to, um, let's say outdoor furniture for now. Okay, easy place to put it, and I'll click on the wizard. So when I click on the wizard here, I'm just going to, you know, call out what it's called, all right? Um, so I type that in, and I simply click next, and it asks me if it's on the screen. Well, the answer is no, so I'll simply say next. And now what I want to do is import the three-dimensional symbol. Again, I know I'm going fairly quickly, but in this case here, I can now pick what the symbol is going to be, and there it is. And then I can drop it into either a new folder or an existing folder. And I know I have outdoor living, you know, uh, furniture here. So I'll just click on that and select OK. And now I'll pick OK. And at this stage here, it imports the symbol for me. I can now select next. It prompts me. In this case here, it's a square. So it's it, as long as the top and the bottom are right, it's pretty, you're pretty safe as far as, you know, that goes. 
but um, sometimes you have to reorient symbols. So this is what this allows you to do. So again, I'll click next on that. I'll, I'm happy with the profiles. And so once I, I've done all of this, I can simply tell it to generate a two dimensional symbol that will work for me. Okay. And so when I, um, you know, go through this, it will generate that symbol for me, which then can be drawn into my, my floor plan, uh, and my site plan, um, et cetera. Now this is, you know, fairly uneventful because it's just basically a couple of boxes, but over here inside the, the, the plan view, I'll simply pick draw. I'll do a quick look for symbols. I'm going to just simply, t you know, begin to type in, you know, what I'm looking for. And so I will pick this, right? And now I could click to draw that in. Now I can tell you that I've also got, you know, um, because I did, you know, this in advance, um, you know, I, I could, you know, I've got some Adirognet chairs that I can just drop in there, okay? And so very quickly, we now have created kind of a fire pit area, right? And so here we are, I could now come in through my site plan. So inside drawing, I'll just come in through site plan. And here I could just come in through, you know, um, site work and I'm just going to, you know, select, uh, you know, something like a sidewalk. I'm just gonna pick, let's say the spline option. And I'm just going to, you know, click that I want to create you know, some sort of a, you know, feature out there. And as you can see, I'd already assigned kind of a rock or gravel texture to this. I will edit this and I will tell it to fit to the, the ground to drop it down so that, you know, these are, are um, you know, sitting on top of that. And I could add other rocks and such, you know, to this. But now we've kind of created, you know, a area that is of interest, you know, to this. The last thing that I will do is we're going to fence our yard in, okay? It's part of the project. So inside the site work here, you can, you know, scroll down and select fence. You can pick from the list of fence options that are there. So in this case here, let's just say, um, I'll just, you know, scroll through real quickly until I find privacy. There it is. I'll pick OK. And I can do, you know, a similar thing where I'm just kind of sketching a, you know, uh, perimeter all the way around where our you know privacy fence is to go and when I do that okay you can see that it pulls or drops the fence in and here we are we're now outside the fence so I'll just pop this up and take a look you know at what we've done okay little things like we you know would want to add you know in other types of furniture etc of course would all be done okay and so let me just pull this you know kind of finished you know version of this on here right which is fairly similar to what we had these are just some custom symbols I pulled down this is actually a Wayfair you know table that's in there, but something I just want to, to, to finish on with this is you can now come in and you're using DX12, okay? And so as you go into the mode options and in the lighting, okay, by default, your lighting is on. Um, I've turned the auto lighting off because I'm gonna control the light surfaces. And you can see with the tone mapping, I can increase or, or decrease, you know, the overall brightness of this. I have shadows on, okay? Path tracing takes it to another level of high end rendering as you know as far as that goes inside the background option um by default a second ago everything was just a white color okay the sky box if you click on this and it prompts you for you know to go in and click this as i click on this you'll see that i can actually set the sky feature to be up down left right so as you you know rotate around or, or you know create an animation this would actually you know have you know, different textures on each of the sides so that you don't get that same sky, you know, fixture, you know, on your, on your plan. Okay. And then as far as the sun options are concerned here, I can now go in and I can specify. So we could start at five o'clock in the morning and, you know, sorry. And as we go here, we can now click and just move through the day and you can see how quickly that's going to allow us to see where shadows are going to be in a backyard hardscape, especially if you're putting things like pools in, et cetera, you may want to know where the shadows are, where you're setting things. Okay. As far as that goes. And so this would be a great option for you to, to, to do. And you can set up and create, okay, animation files like that. So you can go in and, and you could, you know, do a, 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 you know, a video of this 
whereby I'm going in and I'm setting up like a full day sun study. Okay. And I'll just call this test for right now. And so as I generate that, you can see the sun as it's going through and capturing, you know, what's, what's going to happen. And once that is done, okay. And again, I've got a, a fairly quick system going on here that could then be uploaded to um, my to, to, to YouTube. And so here I will just, you know, pull this on. There it is. And so, you know, I could then upload this to my YouTube, you know, um, file page and, and go from there. All right. So that's, um, you know, in a, in a nutshell, you know, from other than, you know, being able to go in and, um, you know, finish out drawing everything with you. And I did skip ahead just a little bit to add in, you know, so you could see a few of the symbols, but we really did cover a lot here. And of course, you know, um, as far as editing the fire pits and editing those, you, they edit the same way as any other symbol is concerned. So anything that you edit will have a, you know, a dimension field that goes with it. You could even go so far as to add things like fires and logs and all that stuff in there. Um, but that's what I have for you today. Um, thank you for joining us for the Friday Fundamental on Outdoor Living Space. And uh, as I said, we'll post this to our YouTube page next week so that you'll have an opportunity to go in and review this. Have a great weekend, guys, and thank you very much.